Okay, folks, uh, this is 1.2.6. Sorry I'm not there today, but you can tell because my voice, uh, I have a sore throat, and I'm not coming in to work, but I'm here to help you guys out anyway. So, um, first off, if you guys look at this, you're supposed to build this. This is a 1.2.6, uh, which is uh, understanding the analog design of the random number generator. Uh, remember the random number generator? You soldered it together. It's got the little dice roller, right? Um, when you push the button, it kind of goes through one, two, three, four, five, six very quickly over and over and over again, and it does that using a clock. It used a five, five, five timer inside your thing. You you guys put it in yourself. It's the very small integrated circuit that goes into the uh, soldered in. Actually, you plug it in to the socket. Now you guys also built a five, five, five timer to build, to blink at one hertz uh, in class. And uh, it looks very similar to this. There was a ground here. Uh, there was a little capacitor, a big capacitor, a 6.8K, a 1K or a 1.2K resistor. Uh, this wire uh, was pin 4. Uh, this one was pin 3, and it went to an LED, right? Uh, only difference is, is here in Multisim, we don't have to put the resistor and make it go to ground. You could just use this probe, but be a little bit lazy and just go, ah, I'm just going to stick a probe, and the probe just blinks on and off. In real life, there's no real component that you could just stick in there with one single wire and it just turns on automatically without anything else. Uh, but in multi-sim you can. Um, there is a VCC and there's a ground down here. Um, the only difference is from doing this last time uh, yesterday with the uh, one hertz resistor or the one hertz 555 timer is this little extra resistor, this capacitor, and this little switch here. You know, and so what it was was if, if I don't know if you remember, but when you push the button, if you hold it down, this five 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 timer blinks blink 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 really fast, which is rolling your dice. When you let go of this button, you'll see that this blink slows down real slow and then stops. That's how it decides what number you're gonna get. Uh, so this is the thing that kind of keeps the timing mechanism. So uh I'm just here to show you where you find capacitors, resistors, where do you find the LM555CN, where do you find the probe, and where do you find this switch right here, So and this digital ground. So I'm going to show you where you find that stuff. Uh, I think most of the stuff you know where to find it, so let me start with the hard stuff, the stuff you probably haven't seen. We're going to go to all groups, and I myself don't know right offhand where the LM555 is. So I'm just going to type it in, and we need the CN right here, so you'll definitely need that one. I'm not going to wire this thing together, so I'm not going to make this a long video. I'm just going to show you where this stuff is. Um, the next thing is that weird button thing, right? So we're going to go to basic, and we're going to go to switches. And normally we use this SPDT, right? Well, this time we're going to use this one. It's a sort of just a regular simple button. And of course, if you want it to look like that, we can rotate it around properly, but you can do that on your own. Um, there are capacitors, uh, which should be basic components as well. So they should be here. There we go. Capacitors. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. Click on anything you want, uh, really. And go ahead and click on another one because you're going to need two. Uh, just make sure that when you... Uh, that you have a 470 nanofarad and a 10 nanofarad, okay? So we're going to go... Uh, 470 so you can actually type in 470 here and put n and then there's already a big f here so 470 n is 470 nanofarad and put okay and you can see there it is right there and the other one is the uh 10 nanofarad so we'll just put 10 n and if it was 10 micro you would just go like that so but it's 10 and if it was milli we would do that I'm, you don't really see milli farads though uh, so 10 nanofarads, but okay. And there we go. And the probe, uh, you guys have used them before, but I'll show you again where it is. Uh, you're going to go to indicators, click probe, and just that's the one they're using there. You could just use that one. That's fine. If you want to use a colored one, you can do that as well. Uh, but just put it like that. There's your probe. Um, Notice it says 2.5 volts. I guess you can change it, but actually leave it 2.5. I think that means if it hits over 2.5, uh, it turns on. So that's the threshold. So that's fine. You can keep it like that. Um, 
We got this, we got that, we got that. The resistors, you know where those are at. I'll show you right now. We already showed you this. So I'll show you the powers. I notice there's a digital ground, a regular ground, and a VCC. If this doesn't work right, maybe make sure these two grounds are the same. I don't know. Uh, but place component. If you're looking for the resistors, you guys should already know. Go to basic and then click resistors. And then uh, just click OK. And however many you need, I think you need like three at least. And don't forget to double click on these and change the values right here to 1.2K or 10K or whatever they are. Don't forget that K, that's gonna be very, very important. The, the ohm symbol's already there, just put the K or the M if it's omega. Um, and then the power stuff, place component, uh, sources. And we're gonna go to power sources here. And it looks like you needed a VCC the five volt VCC, and then you need, and for some reason they use a digital ground over on that switch thing, and then they have a regular ground, uh, just an analog ground uh, for the other thing. So I guess you know, try it out like that and see if that works. If not, try to make sure they agree. It's kind of odd that they use two different ones. I don't see that very often. And I, I think that covers all the parts. So remember, this is just a timing mechanism. This is your clock. This creates a clock signal. The wire comes out here. This would have went into the, uh, in your board, this would go into the sequential logics, the 74LS74 flip-flops, and created a counter. Uh, and then the counters would have translated into uh, combinational logic to make sure they're ruling the right numbers at the right times. Uh, we'll get into that, I think, uh, next next class. Okay, so uh, that's about it, folks. And if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to email me. Wire this together. Oh, and you will need the uh, oscilloscope, the four-channel probably, even though I think we're only going to need one. So you need that four-channel oscilloscope. Um, and you'll probably just need the 1A because if you look in the assignment, um, when you're done building this, uh, they want you to put an oscilloscope. Well, they have all three here, I guess. Um, but really, A is the important one right here. A is the important one. That's the really only one you're going to look at. Because you're going to see that, you see this right here? Bump, 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 bump. This nice, beautiful square waves. That's your 555 timer circuit, creating that beautiful on, off, on, off, on, off. Um, you zoom in, you can look like that, I guess. But it looks like that. And what's weird is it's a certain frequency because there's certain distances apart. But you'll see that when you let go of the button, these get wider and wider and wider because it starts to slow down. So it's kind of neat. You can kind of see it speed up here. And then later on, if you let go, you'll see it slow down. That's pretty neat. And uh, just take a screenshot of the oscilloscope uh, work and the uh, circuit you built, please. And that's it. Okay. See you guys when I get back.